Uh, hi, my name is Alenka, and I'm a children's librarian at the Thomas Hughes Children's Library. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to use Tinkercad's new drawing tool, Scribble, uh, to design a sculpture for our community sculpture garden project. So Scribble lets you draw shapes onto a two-dimensional work plane. Then Tinkercad changes your drawings into 3D objects and lets you edit them like you would any other 3D shape. To access Scribble, uh, find the Scribble icon on the shapes, the shapes pane right here the light blue scribble drawing, and then drag and drop it anywhere on your work plane. Tinkercad then converts to a 2D work plane. So if you're using a tablet, you can now draw with your finger or a tablet pen or a stylus. Uh, but if you're on a computer, you'll be using the mouse to draw. The pencil icon at the bottom is the drawing tool. And since I'm on a computer, I'm going to click and hold down the clicker on the mouse to draw. So since our theme for summer is Sculpture Garden, I decided to look at some Chicago sculptures for inspiration, and I found this. Uh, it's this kind of creepy, cool spider from the Louise Bourgeois Sculpture Garden at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. And I just found this by Googling like Sculpture Garden Chicago and looking at random examples. I liked how it was weird, it's eerie. It has these cool swooping lines uh, that make a kind of unusual shape and a shape that you might not easily find in Tinkercad. So I decided to make something similar. Uh, so there are a bunch of lessons in Tinkercad that show you how to break down objects into simple shapes. And there's a great video on our YouTube that walks you through the Intro to Primitive Shapes lesson, which helps you think about how to use that process to create complex objects. This sculpture doesn't have a lot to it, really. There's this centerpiece uh, that's kind of a, like a crooked oval, and then the spindly legs that are either bent in this kind of L shape or curved, like this one. So going back to Tinkercad, I'm going to start with the body shape and try and sketch out a shape that I think is similar. Um, let's see. This is my first attempt. And I'm not really happy with it. Uh, so at the bottom of the work plane, next to this drawing tool, which is what we're using right now, there is an eraser. So I'm going to click that. And then I can kind of scribble out this line on the left. There we go. Nope, I missed a bit. And now I can attempt to redraw it. So let's see. Make it a little curvier. So on the top right, Tinkercad gives you a preview of what your shape will look like when you convert it to 3D. Uh, looking at this, I think I'd like to actually start completely over. So if you want to erase a bigger shape like this, uh, there is this tool on the far right called Erase with Shape. And this is going to be a lot faster. Now I can click and hold and draw a big circle around my shape. And it's gone. I can start completely over. Uh, the last scribble tool that is here to explore, this is called Draw Shape. I find this tool a little tricky to use, but I think it might be helpful for this weird oval that I want. So to use it, I'm going to click with my mouse and hold down the clicker and then kind of drag a sharp line out and then swipe around with the pointer to make a filled in shape. That's not bad, uh, but I think I'm gonna edit my shape with the pen tool. Try and make this line a little more swoopy and curvy. Oh, and you'll see in the preview, this gap here also shows up in your 3D shape. So you can just color that stuff in to make sure your shape is completely filled in. I'm happy with this attempt, so now I'm going to move on and make the legs for my spider. But before I do that, I need to hit done on the bottom right hand corner, and that will convert the spider body shape into 3D. If you draw multiple shapes on the same 2D work plane, Tinkercad will treat them as one shape. So to give you a quick example, uh, I'll draw a random square right here. Then I'm going to hit done. And the square I drew and the spider body, see it says shape and there's no number, uh, they are just one shape. I can't edit them separately. So I want to be able to move each shape I'm making individually. So I'm going to hit edit, scribble, which will take me right back here. And then I can use my nice erase with shape tool. And we'll get rid of the square. And then done. So I will edit the spider body more later. Uh, for now, I'm going to zoom out a little bit move this guy to the side, and we're going to make some legs. Uh, I don't want to draw a bunch of individual legs, so I think I'm going to make two 
we'll do one in that L shape and one that is a smoother curve, and then we'll duplicate them. So I will drag another scribble onto my work plane or back to our 2D work plane. Uh, so for the legs, their legs, they need to be kind of long. So I'm just going to eyeball this and say like maybe like three of these big squares will be enough. Uh, for the first shape, we'll do the curve. So we'll start up here. Let's see. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. So I'll hit done. And then one more time, drag my scribble. And then we want kind of that L shape. I lost control a little at the end, but I think it's supposed to be a creepy spider. That's kind of cool. So I'll head down and I'll keep it. So now I'm done with Scribble itself. Uh, all that's left to do is to move my shapes around, duplicate them, play with what I've created until I've got something I like. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to my spider body. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's upright the way I want it to be. I believe, yes, this little turn will do. Uh, and then I'm going to move it up into the air along the z-axis. So to do that, I click on my shape. I use this black triangle at the top, and I can click and drag it up into the air. I'm also going to rotate the legs and make them fit into the spider body. So when Scribble converts your shapes, it will make them kind of a random size. Uh, and these are pretty thick. They are 10 millimeters right now. They're supposed to be spindly spider legs. So I'm going to shrink them. We'll do about two millimeters for each leg. There we go. And I'm going to move them where I want them to be. Switch my spider body over. And then these I also have to rotate. So Scribble will also lay all of your shapes flat. You will find you have to rotate things a lot. Um, as a reminder, that's what these curved arrows are for. I can rotate this guy 90 degrees. Do the same thing with this one. Oh, I lost it. There we go. Uh, and then they're also, this one is facing the wrong way. I'm going to wait. That would be 180, not 90. Here's the most math I'll ever do for you. 90 and 90 is 180. And I hope you have a steadier hand than I do. Here we go. Okay. And again, to raise these on the z-axis, we use the little black triangle. And this box on the bottom, when it says zero, that means my shape is flat on the work plane, which is good. If your objects aren't flat on the work plane, we'll have to move them around before we can print them. Add another zero. And then I'm just going to use the arrow keys and have them overlap with the spider body a little bit. But when you use the arrow keys to move shapes in Tinkercad, it is a little smoother. They'll only move along the x or y axis in one direction so you won't accidentally like knock them into another spot or something Oops. there we go cool so i said i would just duplicate the shapes that i made if you've never used the duplicate tool that is what we're going to do next so i'm going to come up here to this shape it looks like a square <laughs> and repeating squares um, i will click that when you duplicate an object, it puts a copy of your object right on top of the first one. So I'm going to use my arrow keys again, but you'll see an exact copy of my leg has now appeared, and I can just move it oops, to the front of the spider body. And then we can do that on the other side. Click our leg, hit duplicate, and then when I use the left arrow key, it moves the second object for me. I'm going to duplicate this leg one more time. I actually bumped it forward. Thank you, Tinkercad. That's nice of you. And then I'm going to move it to the other side of the body. I'm going to rotate one more time. Nope, I missed. 
Oh no, 180. I'm doing really bad math for you guys today. Okay. You know what? I can also always just do minus 180, I believe. Oh no, let me click. Okay, that's good enough. It's this creepy spider. It can be a little off. And then I'm going to put this leg in the middle of the other one. Ooh, they're very close together. Yeah. To give it kind of a creepy look. Yep, so now it's a little more uneven. So I will do the same thing for the other side. I will duplicate this leg. Scooch it to the other side. Rotate it 180 degrees this time. What is the let me type in? Nope. Sweet. And then I can use my arrow keys again to move it around. And I want my shapes to overlap a little bit just to make sure the connection between the legs and the body is pretty strong when it prints. That's pretty much it. I made a weird spider. Um, I'm going to group everything together. All right, now it's seven shapes. When I hit group, it becomes one. And that's it. That's my spider. Um, you guys won't print to your own objects, so you don't really need to worry about this. But I can also use this rotate tool again. Zoom out a little bit and lay the whole thing flat on its side. It might print a little nicer that way. Um, I did do a test print with a spider lying flat on its side and a spider standing up. I can show you those. That's these guys. So the green one, the missing leg was an accident that had nothing to do with printing. Uh, this one was printed flat on its side. And you can see this one on the right is the one that was printed standing up. So these long poles that aren't spider legs are called supports. Uh, the printer makes these to hold the object up while it's being printed. This is a lot of supports. It, it took a, a big effort to break them all off carefully and not break any of the legs. So it's kind of just the benefit of printing something flat on its side. Um, but it held up. These actually stand up on their own too, which is pretty cool. Another option, if I wanted to make sure everything prints nicely, is I could send in the legs and the body as separate files and just like hot glue them together later. Uh, but that's it. That's an overview of how you can use Scribble. It's pretty fun. It lets you be very creative and versatile with your designs. So I'm excited to see what sculptures you make with it. Uh, to submit your designs, there will be a form on the website. Uh, you can visit shypublive.org slash SLC freebie printing. And then there will be a form uh, under this post for you to submit your designs.